Okay, let's start another session. Uh, first of all, shh, thank you. First of all, uh, you probably noticed that uh, the food trucks are already available. So two of them are here in the main square and another three are in a, a parking lot uh, behind the E pavilion. So right now uh, we are going to have a rootless containers presented by Giuseppe Scrivano, principal software engineer in Red Hat, and Akihiro Suda, software engineer in NTT Japan. In this talk, we will discuss how to build and run containers without root privileges. Uh, so hi everyone. Today we are going to to talk about rootless containers, that it's uh, how to run uh, containers without having root privileges. Um, so we are, I'm uh, Giuseppe Scrivan, I work at Red Hat. I work uh, with containers related stuff on different projects. And uh, I'm Akihiro Suda, I'm a software engineer at NTT, uh, which is a large telco company in Japan. I'm also a main engineer of uh, Mobi, which was formerly known as Docker Engine. Also, a maintainer of BuildKit, the next generation backend of Docker Build. Also, a maintainer of uh, Contrand, uh, which is a CS project. Uh, so, uh, let's start with uh, demo of uh, user NetS, uh, which is, is a distribution of Kubernetes that can be executed as a non root user. Uh, so, uh, on uh, this note, sorry, could you hold? And uh, my ID is uh, 1000, so uh, my username is uh, user, and I don't have a uh, sudo, and uh, I have binary of uh, Kubernetes and uh, prime on this degree, and apparently this one doesn't have a uh, CPUID plus, and everything is running as an uh, unprivileged user, so uh, we can see Cryo uh, is uh, working as amplitude user, and also uh, Hyper Hyperq uh, is working as amplitude user. And also uh, even uh, FranLD, uh, which provides uh, mature networking, is running as amplitude user. And uh, the cluster is uh, composed of uh, three nodes. Uh, with uh, cryo nodes and uh, Docker nodes and uh, container D. Uh, so the cluster is a uh, mix of uh, three different uh, runtimes. run times. Uh, so the this node is running cryo, but uh, we have uh, container D node, and container D is running as amplitude as well. And uh, Docker node is also running uh, Docker D as uh, amplitude user. On this cluster, uh, we're running a uh, uh, port of NZX, and uh, NZX has uh, three instances uh, run running on uh, three uh, distinct nodes, and uh, this one has a uh, distinct IP address. And also, uh, the uh, NZX master process is uh, running as ambitious uh, as well, of course. And we also have a uh, cross node networking. So, for example, uh, on the uh, first node of uh, index instance, the IP is uh, 10.5173, and uh, we can uh, connect to the uh, instance of uh, different nodes as well easily. Like this. And uh, so uh, this is unprivileged, but in the container uh, we can gain uh, root, but limited uh, scope, so the ID uh, becomes root. And also uh, we can even do uh, some package manager as APK. Uh, so uh, Wi-Fi is uh, pretty, so the APK is uh, failing 
but uh, if uh, we, we have a uh, few minutes work, APK works as well. Uh, so let's continue the presentation. So uh, let's start with the introduction of uh, rootless containers. Uh, rootless containers uh, refers to the uh, ability for uh, amplitude user to uh, create, uh, run, and otherwise uh, manage containers. It's not just about running containers as an amplitude user, it also entails uh, running uh, container runtime such as Cryo and uh, orchestrators uh, such as uh, Kubernetes as an amplitude user. Uh, so, uh, this must be, be uh, confusing. Uh, so, uh, don't confuse with uh, Docker run dash dash user who, uh, which executes a process in the container as a non root user. Uh, so, it, it still uh, executes uh, Docker D, uh, container D, and runs it uh, through running as a root. So, our work is also defined from uh, the user instruction in Docker file. Uh, this is substantially the same as uh, Docker run dash dash user. In, in this local file, notably, uh, you can't do uh, run a DNF uh, install because uh, you are not uh, root in the container. Also, uh, our work is uh, different from uh, user mode dash AJ Docker foo, uh, which uh, adds uh, the user foo to the uh, Docker Linux group, uh, which allows a uh, non-root user to connect to uh, slash bus slash run slash docker.soc. Uh, this is substantially equivalent to allow the user to gain the root on the host, uh, so the user can uh, do uh, docker run dash dash privilege uh, dash boy uh, slash dot slash uh, host to uh, gain the root on the host. Uh, of course, uh, our work is not about uh, running sudo docker or uh, just uh, switch mode plus s, so which adds uh, set uid bit on docker d binary, of course. And also, the, our work is defined from uh, Docker D dash dash user NS remap, uh, which executes containers as a uh, non root user uh, called doc remap uh, using uh, username spaces. Uh, in uh, user NS remap, uh, inside the containers, uh, doc remap can behave as if it was a root. Uh, this is very similar to the, our uh, rootless containers, uh, but it still requires the Docker D, Contra D, and Run C to be executed as a root, so this is defined for our work. Uh, so uh, the motivation of our rootless container is to uh, mitigate uh, potential vulnerability of uh, container runtimes and orchestrate uh, uh, This is the primary motivation, but uh, our work can be also used to allow uh, user of shared machines, such as HPC, to uh, run containers uh, without the risk of uh, breaking other users' environments. Our work can also uh, can be also used for isolating uh, nested containers such as uh, Docker in Docker. Uh, so uh, the container runtimes uh, has been uh, suffering from uh, many vulnerabilities. Uh, for example, uh, five years ago, a vulnerability uh, called Shoka was found uh, by security researcher. Uh, so a malicious container was allowed to access the host file system as a root. Uh, using uh, cap duck research capability, which was uh, effective by default. Also, uh, there was a uh, vulnerability in uh, Docker build command, uh, so, uh, which could run arbitrary binary on the host as a root uh, because of uh, some uh, archive issue related to the LZMA. Also, last year, uh, there was an uh, issue in container D. Uh, so a malicious container uh, image could uh, remove uh, slash TMP on the host uh, when the image was uh, pulled from the registry. Uh, this is uh, not, not when actually, actually the container was created. It happens uh, when the e image was uh, pulled from the registry. Also, uh, just a couple of, uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, we found a fixed uh, serious uh, issue uh, that relates to uh, Minikube. Uh, so a malicious container uh, could gain the right access to a proc file system and a sys file system uh, when the host root file system is uh, in RD. Uh, so it can uh, result in arbitrary command execution as a root on the host uh, via uh, proc sys kernel core pattern or uh, sys kernel u event helper. Uh, as far as I know, 
uh, Minikube uh, was known to be affected, and it was fixed in the uh, uh, latest release. Uh, so uh, you can try uh, container breaking uh, Minikube uh, using uh, this command. <coughs> and also there was a bunch of uh, vulnerability, uh, for example, in Kubernetes. Uh, so two years ago, uh, there were uh, some vulnerability that allows malicious container to access the host file system via uh, volumes. Also, uh, last year, there was an uh, issue uh, that uh, could be uh, used to gain cluster admin and, and hence uh, root, pre root privilege on the uh, nodes. And there was a vulnerability in uh, Git uh, which affects uh, Kubernetes uh, repo volumes. And also, uh, play with Docker.com, uh, which is uh, online Docker playground uh, implemented using Docker and Docker uh, with custom RPA profiles, uh, has a serious vulnerability uh, that allows uh, loading malicious kernel modules. Uh, this is not really an uh, issue of uh, Docker itself, uh, but uh, this is a misconfiguration of uh, upper RPA profiles. Uh, so our uh, rootless containers uh, can uh, mitigate uh, these vulnerabilities, uh, but uh, it's the panacea, uh, especially uh, it's uh, powerless against uh, kernel vulnerability and also uh, hardware vulnerability. So uh, our work is just a new layer for uh, what is called a CAS approach. Uh, so uh, it should be used in conjunction with other security layers, uh, such as uh, SecComp or uh, SA Linux. Yeah, so now we can start looking at uh, some uh, implementation details on how uh, bootless containers work. Uh, uh, namespaces are the kernel feature that allowed us to have uh, containers. There is a mountain namespace that gives the process a, a different view on the file system that there is from the host. There are other uh, uh, namespaces like network that uh, gives the gives the process a, a different view on the network stack. The, I think the user namespace is the most interesting one because it enables uh, really nice uh, uh, scenarios like, like rootless containers. What the uh, user namespace does is to create a, a mapping from uh, IDs from the host or more in general from the parent user namespace as, as, you, as you can have a nested uh, tree. Uh, to the to the process running in the in the in the rootless uh, environment, um, so a process can be lived to be running like root, but in reality it's running like the unprivileged uh, user that created the user namespace. Um, not every ID from the host must be mapped uh, inside the user namespace. Only a subset. Well, in, in fact. Uh, for uh, rootless uh, containers, this is very important because uh, once you gain uh, root privilege inside the user namespace, you have uh, control on, on uh, any other um, uh, user present in the, and defined in the namespace. Um, by default, an unprivileged user can map all itself inside the new environment. So you can create a mapping between the unprivileged user to any other ID because anyway, from the kernel, it will be just mapped to the, the same user. Uh, the, the process can keep full uh, capabilities, like if it will be running as root. But of course, there are, uh, uh, there are restrictions. Uh, like, uh, like I said, uh, you can change your ID, but it's only limited to the IDs that are present already in the namespace. You can't change to any ID you want, or uh, you have, uh, the, you have the capability of uh, changing the network, but it's just the network devices that are defined in the, in the new environment. Uh, I think just one ID, it's not enough for running uh, uh, most images out there. You can't run DNF, you can't install new packages. And uh, for that, there is a, there is a set your ID program that defines that allows to define uh, additional users for each unprivileged uh, user. So you can, uh, in addition to your, to 
your own ID. You can have uh, multiple IDs mapped inside the uh, rootless uh, environment. Uh, but uh, the, these tools are now uh, basically packaged for any distro. And uh, so if you add a, user on, uh, a new user on the system, by default, you will get already a range allocated for your uh, user. Uh, well, set your uh, programs are, uh, are dangerous, and we tried for anything else to avoid them. But in this case, it makes a bit sense because uh, the, the logic of uh, uh, managing the additional ranges, are, it's, uh, it's managed on the system, not by the kernel. Like, uh, so there were a few issues with, uh, with these tools. Uh, and uh, also, the, the, w there is a need to maintain a centralized uh, a database of the, all the ranges allocated and to what user. You, you can't allocate the same users to, the same IDs to the same user, otherwise they will be able to, to well, to, to read each, each other resources. Mm. Well, the simple alternative way, of course, is to use a single mapping. But as I said, that will break many images. It can work in some cases like, uh, applications that are run as a single user, but uh, that's uh, very limiting. Uh, the other way we tried to, do, the other part we tried to follow is to limit the privilege of this set UID applications. Uh, and in fact, the new, new versions now are not installed as a set UID uh, programs, but they are using file capabilities because all they need are just two capabilities of all the sets that is, uh, that you get when become root. Uh, so even if now the, this application will break, they will still have only two capabilities available. So it's a bit limiting the damage. Uh, create network namespaces uh, with recent kernel. Uh, along with uh, user namespaces. Uh, so uh, with network namespaces, an uh, amplitude user can uh, create uh, IP tables rules and also isolate abstract Unix sockets, uh, which is a kind of Unix socket but doesn't have uh, pass on the file system. And also the user can even set up uh, overlay networking uh, with a brick run. Also the user can uh, run TCP dump and also do a uh, bunch of stuff. Uh, but uh, there's a problem. So um, an amplitude user cannot set up uh, the virtual Ethernet pair across the host and the namespaces. Uh, that means uh, the namespace cannot connect to the internet. Uh, the prior work uh, by LXC Fox uh, was to uh, use set UID binary called LXC user NIC uh, for setting up the virtual Ethernet pair across the host and containers. But there's a problem, uh, so the CTO UID binary can be dangerous, and LXC Zanik had uh, two CVEs <coughs> so far. Uh, so the, our approach is to uh, use uh, SRAP, uh, which is a, a completely unprivileged user mode network stack. And inside the uh, namespace, uh, we create a tab device, and we send the file descriptor of a tab device uh, using unique sockets uh, to the uh, pairs namespace, and pairs namespace has a uh, SRAP process, and the SRAP process uh, pro uh, provides uh, TCP IP networking uh, to the uh, top file disk, file disk printer. And uh, we have uh, several uh, SRAP implementations, uh, but uh, the SRAP for NetNS, uh, which is our own implementation based on QM SRAP, is the fastest uh, because it avoids uh, copying extra packets across the namespaces. Uh, so the uh, Thrapo NetNS can uh, reach uh, more than 9 gigabps uh, when the MTU is about uh, 64 kilobytes. And also uh, we need to uh, provide a uh, port forwarder uh, which is used for uh, inbound connection. And uh, user mode port forwarder can be implemented uh, independently of Thrap. 
Uh, so the, uh, even Slurpo Netanyahu has a uh, built-in import for the, uh, that can reach 7 gigabps. Uh, but if you use uh, SoCat and in the center, uh, that can uh, reach uh, more than 9 gigabps. And our open uh, optimized, optimized implementation uh, can reach uh, 28. gigabps. It's still freaky, but it's very fast uh, compared to other implementations. And uh, we can also support uh, multi-node networking. Uh, as far as we know, uh, VxLAN and uh, FlanNet is known to work. Uh, VxLAN encapsulates inside the packets in UDP packets and provides uh, L2 connectivity across root con rootless containers on different nodes. And other protocols uh, should work as well, uh, except ones that require uh, access to uh, raw Ethernet headers. So probably uh, GRE is not uh, likely to work. So before a container can be used, the, the image should live somewhere. Most of the backends that work fine with root containers are not usable with uh, rootless containers. Just because an unprivileged user has not enough privileges to set up the storage. Ubuntu unlocked the overlay uh, and it's usable like you would do with root. But uh, that is not supported upstream because uh, kernel Fox thinks it's not safe to enable overlay to an unprivileged user. But RFS allow a privileged uh, volume management, but it needs to be configured before by the admin. And device mapper is completely out of reach for an unprivileged user. Uh, the simplest workaround is to just extract the full image for each container. This works fine until uh, you use busy box. But uh, once you start using uh, bigger images, you realize that it doesn't scale. And uh, as each container will duplicate the entire image. Um, there are a few alternatives. One is to use reflinks. Reflinks is a new uh, feature that you can find in XFS and ButterFS that creates the node of the file, but still the data is uh, it's internally deduplicated. And uh, uh, the, the issue with, the, with uh, refilling is that you still need to create the, the inode. So if you have many files in the image, you will still create that many inodes. Uh, since Linux 4.18, there is a, a nice uh, feature in the kernel that allows using fuse file system from a user namespace. So what we did was uh, re-implement OverlayFS as a fuse file system. Uh, so all the advantages of using Overlay as a root, you will still have uh, as a rootless user. There is the same deduplication for layers. The, it's very fast to set up a new container because you don't need to copy any new file. Uh, uh, in addition to the, the to the basic support for the kernel features, we added the built-in support for shifting IDs. I will talk more in detail of this later. Uh, the cost, it's, uh, that of course it adds complexity. It's uh, quite a lot of new code that can, uh, well, that can uh, bring new bugs in the stack. Uh, so when you create a user namespace by default, we map your unprivileged user to root, and then uh, all the additional uh, IDs specified uh, in the ATC, so by ID from one to as many as you have available. But uh, you can still play around, uh, and, uh, and you can create your own mapping with, uh, with user namespaces, and we allow that. Uh, but this has a cost on the storage, because each time you create a different mapping, you need to be sure that the image on disk uh, reflects the, the mapping you are using. If, uh, if you start using, for, uh, for example, some files that are owned by the wrong user, you will see in the, in the user namespace that all IDs are wrong. So uh, if you're not using Fusor LFS, the solution now is to create a copy of the image. Like uh, for each uh, different configuration of user namespace, you will need to create a clone of the image. Um, what the user layer of FS does instead is to 
is to lie to the, to the system on the ownership of the file. So it does this remapping uh, on the fly without creating a different image first. Of course, it's uh, less expensive than copying and showing all the files as uh, you will need to do using overlay. Um, C groups are the biggest problem with uh, rootless containers at this point. Um, C group of V1, it's, uh, it's uh, not safe to be used uh, by a rootless user. By default, it's completely owned by root and managed by systemd. There were some workarounds, but of course, they, they introduced their own set of uh, issues, like using, again, a CUID, set UID program, as LXC does. Um, C group V2 will solve the issues and, uh, that we had, but still uh, it cannot uh, be used because it's missing some features that are uh, needed for uh, running contain. So once, the, once it will be a feature complete, it will solve all the issues and uh, any rootless container will be able to manage its own uh, C group sub three. Uh, so let's look at uh, current adoptions and uh, let's start from the runtime. So RunC started uh, supporting rootless mode uh, since uh, two years ago. It was basic support, uh, single user, not C groups. Uh, a year uh, after a new release added support for multiple, multiple uh, IDs. And also, if, uh, if you make the C groups path writable, RunC will start using it. Uh, so Podman, that uh, demoless alternative to Docker that Dan introduced before and he already showed all the nice stuff of you can do with root. So it uses uh, all the uh, features we showed before. It uses, by default for rootless containers, it uses Sleep for NetNS. It uses Fuse Overlay FS for the storage. And uh, the nice thing that uh, you can use uh, rootless uh, Podman in the same way as you would use a uh, rootful uh, podman. There is no uh, difference uh, in the CLI. Uh, each user will have its own storage uh, and configuration that are completely separate from the, from the system. Uh, when, uh, when, we, uh, when we create a podman container, we create every time a, a new user namespace. This adds an, an extra layer of security of, of what we were used uh, to have before. If you run a, a, a container now, you will notice that in the host you will get a bunch of mount points. And if you don't do a proper cleanup, they will be leaked. The, the restriction of, uh, we had with user namespaces, that, uh, with rootless user namespaces, that you can't create any resource on the host. It, uh, well, it was beneficial uh, to solve this problem because uh, the kernel simply uh, blocks us from leaking resources on the host. Um, and also, since the containers run uh, in different user namespace, they can't join each other in namespace. So it's like, uh, well, a, another level uh, of protection. Uh, but Podman has pods, and pods uh, are by definition uh, a group of containers that need to share resources. So this conflicts with, uh, with what I was just saying before. So what we do for our pod is to create just one user namespace and every container that is part of the pod will join the same namespace. So they are able to share resources and, uh, well, and uh, still feel like part of the same environment. And uh, Docker is also going to support rootless mode in uh, version 19.03. Uh, but unlike Podman, uh, Fuse Overlay if it is uh, not, not uh, yet supported. And uh, actually, a rootless container is uh, uh, started by uh, LXC folks, and LXC uh, supports uh, what we call rootless mode uh, since uh, six years ago. Uh, but uh, unlike our work, uh, rootless LXC uh, requires set UID binary for setting up uh, network namespaces. And also, uh, there is 
uh, LX, LXD, uh, which is uh, the daemon for managing LXD containers, but LXD still requires daemon to be executed as a root. And uh, Singularity, uh, which is popular in HPC community, also supports rootless mode uh, when a dash dash user in this is uh, specified. But unlike our work, uh, Singularity uh, doesn't support creating network name spaces uh, with uh, internet connection. And also, a uh, cloud foundry uh, guarding container uh, supports a rootless mode. But unlike work, uh, cloud foundry requires set, set UID binary for uh, setting up network name spaces. And uh, we are also uh, working on uh, another OCI runtime uh, called uh, Run Rootless. Uh, run root Rootless is not, not uh, about uh, rootless latency. Uh, it's different from rootless latency. Uh, so uh, Run Rootless uh, doesn't require a sub UID, sub GUID configuration uh, because uh, it can emulate sub UID and sub GUID uh, using uh, PTOS and X attribute. Uh, this is suitable for uh, LDAP environments uh, because uh, sub UID configuration uh, can be difficult uh, with LDAP. Uh, but uh, current implementation has a significant overhead because of uh, PTORES. Uh, so we are planning to replace uh, PTORES uh, with uh, Cycle Anderson's uh, new SICOM framework that is uh, going to be merged in Kernel uh, 5. Point blah, blah, blah. And there's also uh, use Docker, uh, that's another uh, implementation of uh, Docker. Uh, it supports uh, both uh, PTORES uh, mode and uh, RANSI mode, uh, but unlike RAN rootless, uh, the PTORES mode lacks support for uh, persistent switch own. Uh, also, uh, the PTORES mode uh, can't be, be uh, used in conjunction uh, with RANSI. For the image builders, uh, also rootless mode is fully supported by builder. Uh, so like Podman, it, uh, it has the same set of uh, features. It, uh, it uses uh, use of LFS, it uh, clip for, net and net for the network. And uh, when running rootless mode, you should really be able to build the same images that you are able to, run, to build as root user. Uh, also, build the additionally, then Podman supports different isolation modes. It, uh, it supports, uh, when you run a, a command to build the image, a builder creates a new container. The default mode is OCI that creates a, creates a, a container that will be run by run CS root. The rootless isolation mode instead creates a, um, an OCI configuration that is usable by uh, a rootless uh, user. In addition to these two, there is root uh, isolation, and this is uh, usable when your uh, build is already running inside of a container, so you don't need uh, to isolate the build uh, uh, from the host since you're already in a container. So when you run a command, it, it's, it just give a, a basic uh, environment that it's uh, more similar to root than uh, what we the finance container. Our builder kit is a new backend for Docker build uh, that is used in Docker since uh, version 18.06. Uh, but build, can be, build kit can be also used as a standalone stand and rootless demo. And rootless build kit has been used in OpenFast Cloud. And also, uh, build kit is uh, used by uh, Image, uh, which is uh, created by uh, Jerzy Frazel. Uh, so image is also the same as build kit, but it doesn't uh, need daemon. And uh, rootless build kit and image can be launched as an uh, amplified user on the host uh, without any extra configuration. But uh, when you uh, deploy uh, this rootless build kit on the Kubernetes, uh, you need to set up a security contest.proc mount to unmask, uh, so as to unmask uh, file, files under the proc file system uh, so that uh, build containers uh, can mount proc FS uh, with uh, dedicated PID namespaces. Uh, this uh, seems problem problematic, but not really concern as long as uh, running in rootless mode. 
And also, uh, the next version of BuildKit uh, will no longer require a 3D context configuration. Uh, but uh, in that case, there's no PID namespace isolation across the build kit daemon container and the build containers. And Google uh, last year uh, released uh, Kaniko, uh, which uh, is a kind of amplified to container image builder, uh, but this is different from our approach. Uh, so in, in Kaniko, uh, the Kaniko itself uh, needs to be executed in a container, and uh, Docker file run instruction uh, executed uh, without creating nested containers inside the Kaniko container. Uh, so the, uh, uh, run instruction gains the root in the Kaniko container. Uh, so we consider uh, it seems uh, inappropriate for malicious Docker files uh, because of the uh, lack of isolation. Also, uh, recently, uh, Uber uh, released uh, Matis. Uh, this is uh, very similar to Kaniko uh, with regards to unprivileged unpri execution. Uh, the next is uh, current adoption status in Kubernetes. Uh, so uh, Kubernetes and Kube proxy uh, still uh, needs, needs to be patched uh, for uh, running uh, with the uh, C groups and SysCTL. Uh, but uh, we don't need any patch for Kube API server and Kube scheduler. Uh, so uh, for uh, Kubernetes Kube proxy, uh, we, we have uh, some proof of concept patches, and we are going to propose a Kubernetes enhancement proposal of uh, Signal uh, soon. We are also uh, planning to work on Kube ADM integration. Uh, with regards to CRI runtimes, uh, both Cryo and Kubernetes support rootless mode already. Uh, for uh, CNI plugins, uh, Flannel is known to work uh, without any modification. And uh, we provide uh, user netes, uh, which is uh, experimental binary distribution of rootless Kubernetes that can be installable under the home directory uh, wizard mess. Uh, so uh, just uh, download binary archive from github.com slash rootless container slash user and un unpack the archive and just run uh, run.sh. And you can uh, form a synchronous cluster uh, just with uh, this run.sh and you can do uh, kubectl. We also uh, provide uh, Docker Compose YAML for uh, demonstrating uh, should the March node uh, cluster. Uh, the cluster is uh, composed of Docker stream nodes and cryo nodes and container D nodes. And the flannel big run is configured by default. Uh, but uh, this Docker composed YAML is just a proof of concept. Uh, so it, it doesn't set up PLSs. Uh, so we need some contribution. Uh, we are also planning to provide uh, YAML for deploying user needs on uh, existing Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so, any questions? Sorry, speaker loudly. Uh, so the uh, qu question is, uh, uh, what, what happens as a, a root in a rootless container uh, performs some file system operation? Uh, how does it affect on the... Uh, so uh, when you add user in a rootless container, how does it affect on top of... Uh, so the answer is that uh, the uh, real root on the host uh, uh, needs to uh, provide sub UID file like this. Uh, so the uh, new user uh, ID is in the range of this sub UID file. Uh, it's fine, but if it's the out of the range of this sub UID fi file. Uh, the uh, add user command uh, will fail. Okay, thank you. And, and, and 
a promise of what? The question is, if we benchmark the fuse over the uh, uh No, we don't have numbers for that. Uh, I did some test, uh, like uh, building uh, containers, and it takes the same time. I would expect fuse to add some extra cost, but uh, we have no numbers for that. The question is if uh, C group V2 will allow C group inside of a rootless container. Uh, yes, because you will be able to to delegate uh, uh, your subtree inside the, the rootless container. So a root inside the container will, will be able to manage that and uh, shouldn't be no different than using it from the host. The question is if there is any new work happening in the kernel namespace, in the kernel uh, space for a rootless container. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Have you, you know if there is anything happening in the uh, kernel? Yeah, uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, Tyco understands a uh, new SecComp framework that can uh, replace uh, Pictures. Uh, so uh, th this is uh, very useful for uh, rootless containers so uh, with a uh, new uh, second framework, uh, we don't need a uh, sub UID and sub GID configuration. So this is very useful for LDAP environments. Yeah, and of course, uh, overlay maybe will at some point will be usable by rootless. Uh, so the question is uh, when the Tyco is patch is going to be merged to the upstream. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I hope it's really, it'll be much soon. Uh, have you, have you thought of anything like this? Like, what is the uh, Sorry, uh, could you speak loudly? Uh, modify kernel to, uh, sorry, what, what device? Uh, having and removing the AKR devices from user space. To add the device from user space. Oh, sorry, I can't. Yeah. So the question is uh, if the kernel change, change the kernel to allow uh, adding and removing device from uh, user space. Uh, well, a rootless container will not gain any additional privilege that your unprivileged user had. So, except managing uh, additional IDs, that's the only extra privilege you gain. But besides that, it must, uh, from the host perspective, it must look exactly as a, an unprivileged uh, process. So, there won't be any difference for, for about the devices for, uh, related to rootless containers. If you can do that already as unprivileged. Okay, so it seems we have no more questions. Thank you all for uh, attending.